dear listeners, and welcome back to our English learning podcast. I'm Sophia. Today, we're starting a new podcast that's all about job interviews. Whether you're applying for your first job or looking to improve your interview skills, we've got some helpful tips and vocabulary for you. And I'm James. Job interviews can be a bit scary, but with some practice and the right words, you can feel more confident. In this podcast, we'll break down everything you need to know. In today's episode, we're going to start with the basics of job interviews. We'll talk about what to expect, some key words and phrases, and how you can prepare. Exactly. So let's start with a simple question: What is a job interview? A job interview is a meeting between you and the person who might hire you. It's a chance for the employer to see if you're the right person for the job, and it's also your chance to see if you want to work there. Yes, and job interviews usually follow a pattern. First, there's a greeting. This is when you meet the interviewer and introduce yourself. Next, the interviewer might ask you some questions about yourself, your skills, and why you want the job. Finally, they might tell you more about the job and the company. At the end, they often ask if you have any questions for them. That's a good point. Asking questions is important too, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's focus on the first part of the interview: the greeting. When you meet the interviewer, you want to make a good first impression. This means you should smile, shake hands, and say something like "Nice to meet you." Yes, that's a simple and polite way to start. You can say "Nice to meet you" or "Thank you for meeting with me today." It's important to be polite and show that you're excited about the opportunity. Now let's talk about the common questions you might hear in a job interview. One of the first questions is usually "Tell me about yourself." This question can be tricky because it's so open-ended. But it's a chance for you to share who you are and why you're a good fit for the job. Exactly. When you answer, try to keep it short and focused. You can start by talking about your experience, your skills, and what you're looking for in a job. For example, you could say, "I have three years of experience working in customer service, and I'm looking for a new opportunity where I can use my skills to help people." That's a great example. And remember. It's okay to practice your answers before the interview. In fact, practicing can help you feel more confident. You can even practice with a friend or in front of a mirror. Definitely, practice makes perfect. Another common question is, why do you want this job? This is where you can show that you've done your homework. You want to show the interviewer that you're interested in the company and the role. Yes, and to answer this question. You can talk about what you like about the company and how your skills match the job. For example, you might say, "I've always admired your company's commitment to customer service, and I believe my experience in this area would allow me to contribute to your team." That's a strong answer. It shows that you've done some research and that you're genuinely interested in the job. Now, let's talk about a word that you might hear in interviews: qualification. Your qualifications are the skills and experiences that make you a good fit for the job. The interviewer might ask, "What are your qualifications, or why should we hire you?" That's right. When you talk about your qualifications, you want to highlight the things that make you stand out. Maybe you have a special skill, like speaking multiple languages, or maybe you've worked in a similar job before. Whatever it is, this is your chance to shine. Absolutely, and don't forget about strengths and weaknesses. These are other common words in interviews. The interviewer might ask, "What are your strengths?" This is a chance to talk about what you're good at. For example, you could say, "I'm very organized, and I'm good at managing my time." And when they ask about your weaknesses, it's important to be honest, but also show that you're working to improve. You could say something like, "I sometimes get nervous when speaking in front of large groups, but I've been practicing and getting better." That's a great way to handle that question. Remember, everyone has weaknesses, but showing that you're aware of them and trying to improve can make a positive impression.
Exactly, we talked about the basics of job interviews. We covered the greeting, common questions like tell me about yourself and why do you want this job? We also introduced some key vocabulary like qualification, strengths, and weaknesses. Yes, we'll dive deeper into preparing for the interview, including how to research the company and practice your answers. We'll also talk about more specific vocabulary that you might need. We're going to dive deeper into preparing for the interview. We'll talk about researching the company, practicing your answers, and some more key vocabulary you need to know. Absolutely, preparation is key when it comes to interviews. The more prepared you are, the more confident you'll feel. So, let's get started with one of the most important steps before any interview, researching the company. Yes, researching the company is essential. But what exactly does that mean? When we say research the company, we mean learning as much as you can about the company where you want to work. This includes understanding what they do, their values, and their culture. Exactly. You want to know what the company is all about. What kind of products or services do they offer? What are their goals? For example, if you're applying for a job at a technology company, you might want to know what kind of technology they specialize in. Or if you're applying for a job at a restaurant, you should know what kind of food they serve and what makes their restaurant special. That's right. And you can find this information in different places. One of the best places to start is the company's website. Most companies have a section called About Us, where they talk about their mission and what they do. You can also check their social media pages to see what they're sharing with the public. Sometimes, reading reviews from customers or employees can give you insight into the company culture. Good point. Knowing this information not only helps you answer questions like, why do you want to work here? But it also shows the interviewer that you're serious about the job. It's a good way to stand out from other candidates. Yes, and it also helps you decide if this is the right job for you. After all, the interview is a two-way street. You want to make sure the company is a good fit for you, just as much as they want to see if you're a good fit for them. Exactly. Now, once you've done your research, it's time to practice your answers. Practicing is one of the best ways to get ready for an interview. You can start by thinking about the questions we talked about in the last episode, like tell me about yourself and why do you want this job? Yes, and you don't have to memorize your answers word for word, but having a general idea of what you want to say will help you feel more confident. You can practice with a friend, family member, or even in front of a mirror. The more you practice, the more comfortable you'll become. And while you're practicing, try to focus on speaking clearly and confidently. Remember, how you say something is just as important as what you say. If you speak too fast, the interviewer might not understand you. If you speak too quietly, they might think you're not confident. So, practice speaking at a good pace and volume. That's a great tip. And don't forget about body language. Even though we're focusing on what to say, how you present yourself is important too. When you're practicing, pay attention to your posture. Sit up straight, make eye contact, and smile. These small things can make a big difference in how you're perceived. Absolutely. And let's talk about another key aspect of preparation, thinking about your strengths and weaknesses. We mentioned this briefly in the last episode, but it's worth diving deeper. When an interviewer asks about your strengths, they're really asking what makes you a good fit for this job. Right. So, when you're preparing, think about the skills and experiences that match the job description. For example, if the job requires good communication skills, think about a time when you successfully communicated in a work setting. You can say something like, one of my strengths is communication. In my last job, I often had to explain complex information to customers, and I was able to do that clearly and effectively. That's a great example. And when it comes to weaknesses, be honest, but also show that you're working on improving. For example, you might say, one area I'm working on is time management. 
I've started using a planner to organize my tasks, and it's really helping me stay on track. Yes, and remember, it's okay to talk about your weaknesses. No one is perfect, and interviewers appreciate honesty. What they really want to see is that you're self-aware and proactive about improving. That's right. Now, let's move on to some more specific vocabulary that can be useful in interviews. One word you might hear is reliable. If someone is reliable, it means you can depend on them to do their job well and on time. You might say, I'm a reliable worker because I always meet my deadlines. Another important word is flexible. Being flexible means that you can adapt to new situations or changes. In a job interview, you might say, I'm flexible and can easily adjust to new tasks or changes in the workplace. Good one. And here's another word, motivated. If you're motivated, it means you're eager and willing to work hard. You can say, I'm a motivated person and I'm always looking for ways to improve my skills. Yes, and one more word that's often used in interviews is detail-oriented. This means that you pay attention to details and make sure everything is correct. You might say, I'm detail-oriented, so I always make sure my work is accurate and thorough. Those are all great words, and when you use them in your interview, try to back them up with examples from your experience. This will make your answers stronger and more convincing. Exactly. And speaking of examples, another great way to prepare for your interview is to think of specific examples that highlight your skills. For instance, if you say you're a good team player, be ready to share a story about a time you worked well with others. That's a great point. Specific examples help the interviewer see how you've used your skills in real situations. It also makes your answers more memorable. Yes, and don't forget about the STAR method when you're thinking of examples. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. First, describe the situation you were in. Then, explain the task you needed to complete. Next, talk about the action you took. Finally, share the result of your action. This method helps you give clear and organized answers. That's a fantastic tip, Sophia. For example, if you're talking about a time you solved a problem at work, you could say, in my last job situation, we had a customer who was unhappy with their order task. I listened to their concerns and offered a solution action, and as a result, the customer left satisfied and gave us a good review result. That's exactly how you can use the STAR method. It makes your answers more structured and easier for the interviewer to follow. Plus, it shows that you're thoughtful and can reflect on your past experiences. So true. And another tip for preparing is to think about the questions you might want to ask the interviewer. Remember, interviews are a two-way conversation. You should ask questions to learn more about the company and the role. Yes, asking questions shows that you're interested and engaged. You might ask something like, can you tell me more about the team I'll be working with? Or what are the next steps in the hiring process? Great examples. And if you want to learn more about the company's culture, you could ask, how would you describe the work environment here? Or what do you enjoy most about working for this company? Yes, those are excellent questions. And by asking thoughtful questions, you show that you're serious about the job and that you're thinking about how you'll fit into the company. Absolutely. We talked about the importance of preparing for your interview by researching the company, practicing your answers, and thinking about your strengths and weaknesses. We also covered some key vocabulary like reliable, flexible, motivated, and detail-oriented. And don't forget the STAR method for answering questions with clear examples. Preparation is the key to feeling confident and making a great impression in your interview. We'll talk about the big day the day of your interview. We'll discuss how to stay calm, make a great first impression, and handle those tricky questions. This is such an important topic because no matter how much you prepare, interviews can still be nerve-wracking. But with the right mindset and strategies, you can handle the day with confidence. So, let's start with the first challenge of the day staying calm. 
Yes, staying calm is easier said than done, right, but it's so important. When you're calm, you can think more clearly, speak more confidently, and present yourself in the best possible way. So, how can we stay calm on the day of the interview? One of the best ways to stay calm is to start your day off right. Give yourself plenty of time to get ready so you're not rushing. If your interview is in the morning, try to wake up a bit earlier than usual. This will give you time to eat breakfast, get dressed, and review your notes without feeling stressed. That's a great tip. And speaking of getting dressed, your appearance is part of that first impression. Make sure you're dressed appropriately for the interview. This usually means wearing something professional, like a suit or a nice shirt and trousers. But it also depends on the job. If you're interviewing for a creative role, the dress code might be a bit more relaxed. Exactly. The key is to look neat and polished no matter what you're wearing. This shows that you're taking the interview seriously. And if you're not sure what to wear, it's always better to be a little overdressed than underdressed. Absolutely. Another way to stay calm is to practice deep breathing. If you feel nervous, take a few deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. This helps to slow down your heart rate and calm your mind. That's a great technique. Another tip is to visualize success. Before the interview, close your eyes and imagine yourself doing well. Picture yourself walking into the room, answering questions confidently, and leaving the interview with a smile. This positive visualization can really boost your confidence. Yes, and remember, it's normal to feel nervous. Even experienced professionals get nervous before interviews. The important thing is to acknowledge those feelings and not let them take over. Tell yourself, I've prepared for this, and I'm ready. Exactly. Now, let's talk about making a great first impression. The moment you walk into the interview room, the interviewer is forming an opinion of you. That first impression is crucial, and it starts with how you greet the interviewer. Yes, a good handshake, a warm smile, and eye contact can go a long way. When you meet the interviewer, stand up straight, make eye contact, and offer a firm but not too strong handshake. Then introduce yourself. You can say something simple like, hello, I'm Sophia. It's nice to meet you. This shows that you're confident and polite. Exactly. And don't forget to be polite to everyone you meet, not just the interviewer. Sometimes the way you treat the receptionist or other employees can make an impression too. Be friendly and respectful to everyone. That's a great point. Once you're seated, remember to keep your body language positive. Sit up straight, avoid crossing your arms, and maintain eye contact throughout the interview. Positive body language shows that you're engaged and interested in the conversation. Yes, and smiling is important too. A genuine smile can make you appear more approachable and positive. Just make sure it feels natural. You don't have to smile the whole time, but smiling when appropriate can really help. Absolutely. Now, let's move on to the main event answering the interview questions. This is where your preparation really pays off. But even if you've prepared, some questions can still catch you off guard. What should you do if you don't know the answer to a question? That's a great question. First of all, it's okay not to know everything. If you're not sure how to answer a question, take a moment to think. You can say, that's a great question. Let me think about it for a moment. This gives you time to gather your thoughts. Yes, and if you really don't know the answer, it's better to be honest than to guess wildly. You can say something like, I'm not sure about that, but I'd be happy to learn more. This shows that you're honest and willing to improve. Exactly. And remember, interviews are not just about testing your knowledge. They're also about seeing how you think and how you handle pressure. So, even if you don't know the exact answer, show that you're thinking through the problem and staying calm. That's a great point. And if you're asked a difficult question, try to stay positive. For example, if you're asked about a time you made a mistake, focus on what you learned from the experience. 
You can say, I made a mistake in a previous job, but I learned from it and made sure it didn't happen again. Yes, interviewers appreciate honesty and self-reflection. They know that everyone makes mistakes. What they want to see is that you can learn and grow from those experiences. And speaking of difficult questions, another common one is the what's your biggest weakness? Question, we talked about this in the last episode, but it's worth revisiting. When answering this question, choose a real weakness, but make sure it's something that won't hurt your chances of getting the job. And always talk about how you're working to improve. That's right. For example, you might say, I sometimes struggle with delegating tasks, but I've been working on it by learning to trust my team and giving them more responsibility. This shows that you're aware of your weakness and are actively trying to improve. Exactly. Now let's talk about a few more key vocabulary words that can come up during an interview. One important word is initiative. Taking initiative means doing things without being asked. You can say, I'm someone who takes initiative. In my last job, I often identified problems and worked on solutions before being asked. That's a great word. Another important word is collaborative. This means that you work well with others. You might say, I'm a collaborative person who enjoys working in a team and sharing ideas. Yes, and another useful word is proactive. Being proactive means you take action to make things happen, rather than just waiting for things to happen. You can say, I'm proactive in finding ways to improve processes and increase efficiency. Those are all great words, and remember, when you use these words in an interview, always try to back them up with specific examples. This makes your answers more convincing and memorable. Absolutely! And one last thing to remember on the day of the interview is to stay positive, even if things don't go perfectly. If you stumble over a word or forget something, don't let it throw you off. Take a deep breath, smile, and keep going. Interviews are about progress, not perfection. That's so true. No one expects you to be perfect. What matters is how you handle yourself in the moment. Stay positive, stay calm, and remember that you're there because they're interested in what you have to offer. Exactly. We talked about how to stay calm on the day of your interview, how to make a great first impression, and how to handle those tricky questions. We also covered some more key vocabulary words like initiative, collaborative, and proactive. Yes, and remember, interviews are as much about your attitude as they are about your answers. Stay positive, stay confident, and show the interviewer that you're the right person for the job. You've learned how to prepare for your interview, stay calm on the day of the interview, and handle tricky questions. Now, it's time to talk about what happens after you walk out of that interview room. People often think that the interview ends when you leave the room, but that's not true. What you do after the interview can be just as important as what you did during it. We'll talk about following up, staying positive, and reflecting on your performance. These steps can really make a difference in your job search. Absolutely. Let's start with one of the most important things you can do after an interview, sending a thank you note. It might seem simple, but it's a powerful way to show your appreciation and remind the interviewer of your interest in the position. Why do you think thank you notes are so important, James? Great question, Sophia. A thank you note is more than just good manners. It's an opportunity to leave a positive impression. It shows that you're polite, thoughtful, and serious about the job. Plus, it's a chance to reinforce something you discussed in the interview or mention something you forgot to say. Exactly, and the good news is that a thank you note doesn't have to be long or complicated. You can keep it simple. Start by thanking the interviewer for their time, mention something specific that you enjoyed discussing, and then express your enthusiasm for the role. You can send it by email, and it's best to do it within 24 hours of the interview. Yes, for example, you could write something like, Dear Alex, thank you for taking the time to meet with me today. I really enjoyed our conversation about specific topic discussed. 
I'm excited about the opportunity to join Facebook and contribute to the role. Please let me know if you need any further information. Best regards, James. That's a perfect example. It's polite, concise, and reinforces your interest in the position. And remember, if you interviewed with multiple people, it's a good idea to send a thank you note to each person. Just make sure to personalize each one a bit, so it doesn't seem like you're sending the same message to everyone. Great point. Now, let's talk about what to do after you've sent your thank you note. Waiting to hear back after an interview can be nerve-wracking, but it's important to be patient. What do you think is the best way to handle this waiting period? Patience is definitely key after you've sent your thank you note. It's normal to feel anxious while you wait for a response. But try to stay busy and focus on other things. If you don't hear back right away, don't panic. Sometimes the hiring process takes longer than expected. It's important to give the employer some time before following up. That's right. If it's been about a week or two since the interview and you haven't heard anything, it's okay to send a polite follow-up email. You can say something like, Dear Alex, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to follow up on my interview for the manager position. I'm still very interested in the role and would appreciate any updates on the hiring process. Thank you for your time. Best regards, James. Exactly. A follow-up email shows that you're still interested, but it's important to keep it polite and professional. You don't want to come across as pushy. And remember, the hiring process can be unpredictable. Even if you don't get a response right away, stay positive and keep applying for other jobs. That's great advice. And speaking of staying positive, let's talk about dealing with rejection. Not every interview will lead to a job offer, and that's okay. Rejection is a normal part of the job search process, and it doesn't mean you're not qualified. It's important to stay positive and keep moving forward. How do you suggest handling rejection, Sophia? Rejection can be tough, James, but it's important to see it as a learning experience. If you receive a rejection email, you can respond with a thank you note just like you would after the interview. You can say something like, thank you for letting me know. While I'm disappointed, I appreciate the opportunity to interview with Facebook. If possible, I would be grateful for any feedback you can provide to help me improve in the future. Best regards, James. That's a great approach. Asking for feedback shows that you're committed to learning and improving. And if you do receive feedback, use it to your advantage. Think about what you can do differently next time and keep working on your skills. Every interview is a chance to get better. Absolutely, and even if you don't get feedback, take some time to reflect on the interview yourself. Think about what went well and what could have gone better. Did you feel confident in your answers? Were there any questions that caught you off guard? Reflecting on your performance can help you prepare for future interviews. That's so true. Self-reflection is a powerful tool. It's important to be honest with yourself about what you can improve, but also to recognize what you did well. Celebrating your successes, even small ones, can keep you motivated. Definitely. And while you're reflecting, don't forget to update your job search strategy. If you've been interviewing for a while without success, it might be time to tweak your approach. Maybe you need to adjust your resume, practice different interview questions, or even expand your job search to include different industries. Great point. Job searching is an ongoing process, and it's important to stay flexible and open to new opportunities. And speaking of new opportunities, networking is another key part of the post-interview process. Stay in touch with people you've met during your job search. You never know when a new opportunity might come up. Yes, networking can open doors that you didn't even know existed. If you connected with someone during the interview process, consider sending them a LinkedIn request or keeping in touch through email. Building relationships can lead to future opportunities. Absolutely. And while you're waiting for responses and networking, don't forget to keep improving your skills. 
Whether it's through online courses, workshops, or personal projects, continuous learning shows that you're proactive and always looking to grow. That's such an important point. Employers love to see candidates who are dedicated to self-improvement. And staying busy with learning can also help distract you from the stress of waiting for interview results. Exactly. We talked about what to do after the interview. Sending a thank you note, following up, staying positive, and reflecting on your performance. We also discussed handling rejection and continuing to improve your skills and networking. These steps can really help you stay on track and increase your chances of success. Yes, and remember, the job search process can be challenging, but every step you take brings you closer to your goal. Stay positive, stay motivated, and keep learning. You've got this. That's right. We hope this podcast has given you the tools and confidence to succeed in your job interviews. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and we wish you the best of luck in your job search. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this series, don't forget to check out our other episodes for more tips on learning English and improving your skills. We'll see you next time.